Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one and only DJ Storms. Welcome back to the channel here on YouTube.com. It is Thursday, Thursday, May 7th, 2020. Money in the Bank is this weekend. We got a lot to talk about and we got a lot of content coming here on the channel in the next few days. Um, I would like to thank each and every single one of you who have been watching my channel, who have been keeping up to date. I'd like to thank each and every single one of you who have been supporting me since day one. You guys have been awesome. You guys have been really keeping me sane during this time, especially since my intestinal disease has been acting up. Um, I've been in pain for certain points of the day. I've been in pain for like the last couple weeks now. It's uh, it's not necessarily fun, but I promise you I'll beat it. I'll beat it. I'm a fighter. And I said that no matter what's going on here, no matter what's going on internally, none's going to stop me from getting this content up. I told you, none's going to stop me from keeping this brand booming. None's going to stop me from reaching 2K. Not even intestinal disease. So, I would like to thank each and every single one of you who have been sending me your prayers, who have been sending me your support. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who have been keeping up to date with everything that I've been doing. I'm sorry, I've been very inactive on Twitter, um, social media. It's been a crazy week. It's been a crazy week. Lots of, um, lots of festivities took place as far as, um, wrestling goes, as far as, you know, this goes, yada, 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 yada. But, um... We're here to talk about the next dark side of the ring, which was cocaine and cowboy boots, the Herb Abrams story. A couple things before we get started. Please, please follow me on Twitter at HistoryMakerDJS. I know I haven't really been very, very active. I do have a couple of other things to do. I'm currently getting a paper done for values, ethics, and sustainability as we speak. And then, of course, I got finals next week, and then I'll be home free. But follow me on Twitter at HistoryMakerDJS. I will be more active on there in the near future. I promise I will. I'll be live tweeting for uh, SmackDown. I'll be live tweeting for Money in the Bank. I'll be live tweeting for all the weekly shows next week. That's what I usually do. So follow me on Twitter there. Follow me on Instagram and Periscope at the DJ Storms. And of course, this Saturday actually on Periscope, Thunderscope live stream is coming back to you. We're doing another Thunderscope live stream for the second Saturday in a row where Thunder will be performing We, or I Love It Loud. I almost said We Like It Loud. Uh, no, uh, no disrespect to Sleeping Sirens right there, but I Love It Loud by Kiss, his favorite band, actually. That is this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Add me on Facebook as well. And, of course, like the official DJ Storms business page on Facebook, and I'll send you an invite to join the official DJ Storms Posse group on Facebook. All links are in the description. For collaborations and business inquiries, please send me an email at stormstakeover at gmail.com. Quarantine with Thunder episode 6 is currently up. The war's on. If you want to find out what that means, please go check the link in the description. Um, I've said it once and I've said it again. We're slowly losing our sanity during this quarantine. Uh, quarantine with Thunder episode 7 will be up next Wednesday. We got plenty more to come and we're going to continue this up. We're going to keep this up, rather, until this quarantine is over. We're going to keep you guys laughing. We're going to keep you guys entertained during this quarantine. Of course, you know, wrestling analytics can only get you so far. You got to have some entertainment portion right there. Hit the like button if you haven't already done so. I was trying to get this video to 20, 25 thumbs up. Um, you guys actually have been really killing it now with the new goal that I've been setting. No longer 15 to 20. Now it's 20 to 25. We're going to see if we can get to 20 to 25 to 30. We're going to see if uh, we can uh, keep it up. We're going to keep that goal within that range. Um, I want to thank you guys for keeping up to date with the likes. A like and a comment, even if it's just for two minutes on the video, really does go a long way. So one like and a comment and watching two minutes on the video will really, 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 really help me no matter what. I also want you guys to comment down below what are your thoughts on this week's episode of Dark Side of the Ring. And of course, subscribe, we're on the road to 2K. We are less than 100 subscribers away from 2K. Tell everyone about me on all platforms of social media. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your aunts and your uncles and your cousins and your extended family and your siblings and your step-siblings and your stepmothers and your stepfathers. Everyone, tell everyone about DJ Storms, man. I mean, come on. I'm the standard bearer for greatness right here. And of course, if you're going to subscribe, then you better hit that notifications bell with a huge coup de grace because that way you will know whenever I pop up on YouTube. Because whenever I pop up on YouTube, it's the best time to be on YouTube. I mean, come on. Come on, man. You, you, you don't want to. You don't want not to be on YouTube when DJ Storms is on YouTube. 
when that video drops, you know you gotta flock to my channel. You gotta flock to my channel because I'm the guy that's gonna show you how to do YouTube correctly. Not only the best, best damn wrestling analyst on the planet, I'm the greatest YouTuber on this planet. I mean, come on. I'm here, everyone else is here. Just making sure people know their place. I had to throw that in there. And last, but certainly not least, before we get into the Herb Abrams story. Blue Riot Podcast. Yes, indeed. Me and my man, the Blue Riot. Shout out to him. Uh, go follow him on Twitter, at Blue Riot with two Ts. Follow the podcast on Twitter, at Blue Riot Pod. Him and me, we have been having a blast doing the Blue Riot Podcast. Um, episode 5 of the Blue Riot Storms Review. AEW Darkamite, that is currently up on all platforms where you find your podcast, whether it be Anchor or Podbean or Spotify or iTunes. The link to the iTunes podcast is actually in the description, uh, but if you do not have iTunes, it's completely fine. Look up the Blue Riot podcast on anywhere where you find your local podcast, anywhere where you listen to your podcast, and you'll be able to listen to it. Um, we are now on the road to 100 listeners, actually on the iTunes podcast. Um, I believe the last time I checked, it's 80 subscribed. So we just need 20 more. Tell everyone about Blue Riot Podcast as well. Um, also, shout out to my man Joseph Conlin, who actually appeared on the Blue Riot Podcast last Friday with me and the Blue Riot, where we talked about our top five favorite matches of all time, with some honorable mentions in there. That's also on the podcast page, wherever you find your podcast. Again, Podbean, Anchor, Spotify, iTunes. Look it up wherever you find it, man. Get to it. Get to it. You do not want to not be subscribed to the Blue Riot Podcast because Blue Riot Podcast, fastest rising podcast in the IWC. Now then, enough of the self-brand promotion. Let's get straight into the review. Dark Side of the Ring. Cocaine and Cowboy Boots, the Herb Abrams story. So, Herb Abrams was apparently a guy, a small guy with big aspirations, uh, kind of like myself in a way. Small guy with big aspirations, and he owned a clothing store. He owned a clothing store for... Um, for uh, plus-sized women, and he made a lot of money for, and he, he made a, a lot of money from it. He had all this money with him. He had all this money with him, and he had this big dream of starting his own promotion. And he was very, very, very outspoken. He was very outspoken. He was very brash. He was confident. He believed in his words, and he made the people that he was associated with believe in his words as well. So he went to a wrestling convention and he introduced himself to just about everyone and he was able to he was able to um gather up a lot of people, a lot of great star power to form the Universal Wrestling Federation in 1990. And it had a lot of names that actually departed from the WWF at the time. So much so that Mick Foley even said who he was one of the people being interviewed. We had Mick Foley being interviewed. We had uh, B. Brian Blair and Rick Allen. We had Marty Yesberg. We had um, yeah, we had a, we had a lot of classic people. We had a lot of classic people there, um, and they were pretty much explaining how they had guys like Chief J. Strongbow and Mister Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Cactus Jack was there, and they had the opportunity to really kickstart a revolution. They had an opportunity to really kickstart a revolution. Uh, Bob Orton was there as well, Cowboy Bob Orton. And he, he had this crazy vision to pretty much take over the entire world. And he had the television deal, he was trying to get the television deal, and then he actually went to Vince McMahon himself he went to Vince McMahon himself to and make a partnership. He introduced himself to Vince McMahon. He's like, Vince McMahon's got the East Coast. Well, then I'll promote the West Coast. And he was rejected by Vince McMahon. And that really kind of fueled his quest for dominance in the wrestling world. We had a lot of stories, actually. Marty Yesberg was actually explaining the story about how you know uh, he was approached by uh, Herb. And Herb actually brought some 
hookers and cocaine, and that was that. That's pretty much what Herb's lifestyle revolved around. And it does kind of suck in a sense. It does kind of suck in a sense because he didn't really put all the focus on the Universal Wrestling Federation. And I feel as though, you know, despite the vindictiveness towards Vince McMahon, especially so that uh, when he held up the belt, you know, there was an F on one side and then a U on another side, F-U, which is pretty much uh, two birds to uh, Vince McMahon. Even with that vindictiveness and that drive to be the best, even though that, even though he had that drive to, he had that drive to take over the world, it, it's almost like he couldn't separate that. He couldn't separate that from his lifestyle, so much so that he actually got himself in trouble with a couple thugs. He jumped out of a hotel room naked, um, running away from these thugs, and he was calling up. He was calling up people, saying, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? They're chasing me. It's like he 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 had his mind in the wrong place. And it does really go back to a common to a common thread with all of these dark side of the ring reviews is the concept of the concept of drug abuse. Because when you're abusing drugs at that time, especially it's it's it was the norm at that time. Nothing was considered off the table back then. Nothing was considered illegal. Nothing was considered taboo. Again, I will state it was pretty much a free for all back in the eighties and nineties. He really couldn't. He really couldn't put his own lifestyle to the side, and he was pretty much blowing all this money on cocaine and hookers weekly. Weekly, for all we know. Maybe even daily. So much so that that actually took a, took a major effect on the Universal Wrestling Federation as a whole. How... They had so much promise, and they had all this star power. They had so much promise, they had all this star power, and they had a guy like Herb Abrams, who was so passionate about what he did. He was so passionate about what he did. He was so driven, so focused, so motivated. He could make anyone believe his words. He could make anyone feel the energy, feel the passion exuding from him. And it did not result in anything but a failed pay-per-view. Failed pay-per-view where 75% of the arena was empty. 75% of the arena was empty and it was... It was just a... Uh, a complete flop. It was a complete flop and... Uh, you know, even though Mick uh, Mick Foley he had a uh, he had a fun time brawling in the crowd and all that, you know, it, it wasn't going to really result in anything. It sucks. It it sucks to think that, you know, someone's lifestyle and someone's obsession with living the high life in their in their eyes. I don't consider that the high life. I don't consider that the high life, but um. I don't know. You know, this is the first time I've kind of had a loss for words when doing a Dark Side of the Ring review. Probably since the Benoit incident. Probably since the Benoit Dark Side of the Ring review. I, I really just don't have... I, I really don't have any words, in a sense. I don't really know what to... Uh, I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to say. It's... Uh, it, it's it, It's shocking. It's shocking because you really want to wonder what could have been. And a lot of these Dark Side of the Ring reviews, it's not just this one. A lot of the Dark Side of the Ring reviews are really based off of the question, what could have been? What could have been for the career of Dino Bravo? What could have been for the career of David Schultz? What could have been for the career of Bart Gunn had he not been screwed over after he won, after he legitimately won a legitimate boxing competition between professional wrestlers? What could have been for Herb Abrams? What could have been for the UWF had Herb Abrams not gotten so caught up in his own lifestyle? 
And a lifestyle like that, you know, you could it, it could really take a toll on you. And the guy was like always high on coke, telling you know there was all these stories about how he went ape shit with a baseball bat on some hookers, and he was he was arrested, he was thrown in jail, took his clothes off in the jail. It, it, it's scary. It, it really is scary to think about that all of this material actually took place. It really, it really is, it really is tough to think about in a sense because Herb Abrams, Herb Abrams and the UWF had so much potential. It had so much potential. I, I don't really think that it would have taken down the juggernaut that is the WWE. I don't think anyone's going to take down the, the monster that is World Wrestling Entertainment. You know, they've, they've been around for, they've been around for God knows how long now. No, no one's going to take them out of business. I don't even think this pandemic is going to take him out of business. A lot of people are saying, oh my God, WWE is going to go out of business because of the pandemic. No, no. They built the reputation over the course of the last 60 plus years and they have built that following and they've built a mountain. No matter how much money that they might lose, no matter how much money that they might lose, they're not going out of business. No matter how much the ratings dip, they're not going out of business. Herb Abrams he had he had passion he had energy he had the motivation that not a lot of people have and he could really cut a hell of a promo as well i've seen some of the promos that he cut it sucks that all that passion all that motivation and all that um all that drive all that potential just went to waste because of a lifestyle because of him constantly blowing his money. And you know something? That's actually that's actually something that I don't do in my real life. Me, even, even before I was a full blown adult. I mean, I'm 21 now. Even before before any even before I was 18, I was I was very, 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 very picky with my money. I take my money seriously. I, I don't get into these these lifestyles. I, I save my money. I save my money for the important shit. I save my money for when the time's right. I save as much money as possible and I spend it on important shit like bills, food, and clothes. And I make sure that if I am going to spend it on a lifestyle, it's going to be the lifestyle of pro wrestling. But it'll probably be on wrestling merch and stuff like that. But if I need money, if I need money, if I'm going to invest in a business down the line, now I'm not sure if I will, I'll be going into the accounting industry. But like when... When in, in a situation where you have to invest in a business and you have to put forth as much money and as much effort into a business, especially if you're trying to start a wrestling promotion and compete with the biggest wrestling promotion in and around that time and it's still around today, how all of these wrestling promotions have come and gone, but the WWE is still here. It goes to show you that you need to put your personal lifestyle and your personal wants, your desires, you need to put that aside for the greater good of business. And Herb Abrams, unfortunately, did not do that. I mean, he did, he did leave, as someone said, I can't remember who exactly it was in the review, but someone said that he did leave the world doing what he loved, <laughs> you know, cocaine and hookers. If he was happy going out that way, then uh, who am I to, who am I to criticize him for that? But I still believe in the end, if you're going to invest in a business and you're going to put forth all the effort possible to create an empire, and you really want to take over the world, you want to take over that specific area of work, and you really want to make an impact. You can have you can have the charisma, you can have the motivation, you can have the drive. But you need the intelligence, the intelligence and the willpower to put your personal desires and to put your personal lifestyle, put all of that aside. Money don't grow on trees. Money don't grow on trees. And at the end of the day, his lifestyle was his downfall. And it, it's true what they said in a sense. He did start at the top. And ended up at the bottom. 
I can imagine that he was a great guy, and I can imagine that he he did have a major impact on a lot of people's lives, so much so that um, some people were uh, crying over him in the Dark Side of the Ring review. I believe it was Rick Allen. Uh, Mick Foley said he would have had a he would have had a, a nice nice uh, tall cold glass of milk on him. But anyway. That wraps up this edition of Dark Side of the Ring Review. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Quarantine with Thunder. Uh, the Blue Riot Podcast link and all other social media links are in the descriptions. Please go check them all out. Tomorrow is the rundown for WWE Money in the Bank 2020. That will go up tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Lightning Flash update is going up on Saturday afternoon. And then, of course, we got the Thunderscope live stream at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, of course. And then on Monday, on Monday afternoon, it is the rewind for WWE Money in the Bank 2020. And then, of course, episode 7 for Quarantine with Thunder on next Wednesday. And then another Dark Side of the Ring review and a Lightning Flash update the following Saturday. So, you know, I got... Tons and tons of content. At least eight videos, I believe, coming. Eight videos within two weeks. That's got to be a new record for me. I don't think I've been uploading this much on the brand ever since I started it. Uh, my my three-year anniversary is actually coming up in uh, July, on July 16th. So uh, I'm thinking about doing something special. I'm thinking about uh, possibly, 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 possibly bringing back the storm stream. I know I've done a few live streams here and there. A lightning flash update I've done with... Um, Blue Riot, I've done a Lightning Flash update with uh, CM Smiley, shout out to them. Um, I do want to get some more people, I do want to collaborate with a little bit more people here on the channel. I'll be sure to hit you guys up. But uh, for now, that wraps up Dark Side of the Ring Review, Cocaine and Cowboy Boots, the Herb Abrams story. Thank you so much, I will see you guys tomorrow for the rundown for Money in the Bank. You guys stay safe, you guys stay healthy, pray for me so I can get this intestinal disease knocked out. Thank you guys again. You guys have an awesome day.